this where wives come to apologize? No apologies necessary, honey. Everything's just fine. Well, then why are you sitting up here all alone? You're going to change and come back downstairs, and I've waited and waited. I just want to do a little thinking. That's all. I'm so sorry. I know that I was wrong to hit you with my problems the minute you walked in the door. I, I don't even know what to say. Um, I have been so upset lately about Laura and the way she's been acting. And I had such a terrible scene with her earlier. It was all I could think about. I knew that it was wrong, but at the time I couldn't help it. Honey, that's exactly what I meant. I mean, you've been so involved with Laura and her problems, you haven't had time for anyone or anything else. Oh, my love, that is not true. But I can't help being concerned about her. If you and I could just talk about this calmly. Well, I think we should. I realize that I'm going to have to make an effort to keep the wife and mother roles in their proper places, and I am going to try harder. Please be patient with me. Oh, honey. Uh, I'll do all I can to help. I mean, it is a problem. It's starting to get out of hand, and I'd hate for something like this to get in our way and come between us. It won't. I promise you. Oh, Rick, I do promise you. Some tea, my love? Thank you, darling. Say, what are these boxes over here? Are these David's things? Uh-huh, that's the last of his stuff. He says he's going to take it when he leaves in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, once he's gone, you and I will have one less problem to complicate our lives. You are probably now going to roll your eyes and say how changeable women are, but I don't really feel that way about David anymore. I mean, in an odd sort of way. I'm going to miss him. Boy, how changeable women are. <laughs> Well, it's true. And I remember how you felt when I first invited David to stay here to recuperate. Well, that represents a major change of heart. I know. You don't have to remind me. I know how much I resisted. But I didn't know him then. And I certainly had no idea how terribly, terribly lonely he was. And I couldn't have asked for a better house guest. He's been... He's been considerate, he's been okay, helpful. Okay, all right, all right. You don't have to go on and on about David. I know all about him. No, but I mean that. I really do feel sorry for him. Do you know, he's your age. Rick, he has nothing. I mean, he has to start all over again from rock bottom. Now, that can't be easy. No, it isn't. And I'm glad that you turned around about liking him. I think I was the one that said you would if uh, you just gave yourself a chance. Yes, I know. We should prove once again that Father knows best. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> did I tell you that I helped him arrange his furniture today? Yes, you did. I think that was a very nice thing for you to do. Oh, I was glad to do it. I was standing there in the middle of that apartment. I was thinking, this place is like David's life. Okay, Mrs. Bones, I'll bite. Uh, why is his apartment like his life? Because it's very livable. But it's empty. Cute. I'm gonna have to remember to tell that to the boys at the hospital. I happen to be being serious here. You know, really and truly, Rick, it's one of the things that makes me feel sad for him. <sighs> Honey, you have a, a very kind heart. But you know, in a way, I, I think this whole experience may have been very good for David. Well, I'm sure you mean being on his own, not losing his family. I'm talking about the whole course of his life up to this point. I mean, I know he paid a terrible price, but I think he got a valuable lesson in return. What? Well, David and I have had some very frank conversations while he was here, and he totally opened up to me on more than one occasion. He admitted that before the accident, his values were pretty false. The PGA Tour was the most important thing in his life, and making it took precedence over his wife and his family and everything else in his life. He didn't appreciate how much he had until after he lost it all. Unfortunately, that's true of most people. I'm gonna get some tea. Some lemon for my tea, too. Rick, what was Judy like? Judy. 
Judy was a very lovely woman. Well, I was wondering, you know, because I haven't been able to picture the kind of woman that David would want to marry and spend the rest of his life with. Well, she was very different from David. I knew her fairly well when we were in college. And I'll tell you, I was kind of surprised when I got the telegram telling me that, that they had gotten married. She always wanted to be a writer. And I think she would have been very good at it, too, if she had kept at it. But, well, she gave it all up when they got married. Actually, I wanted to know what she looked like. <sighs> women always want to know what men do and what other women look like. <laughs> well, she was beautiful. She had sort of auburn hair and green eyes. Not the flashy kind of looks that Shirley had, but a, a softer kind of beauty. Kind of like those uh, Fragonard ladies, you know, with the white parasols. How many eyelashes? You remember her very well. Well, I ought to. I had a big crush on her there for quite a while. But it passed. Mm. Did you ever see them after they were married? No. No, I'm sorry to say I didn't. They, uh, they moved away to Ohio for a while. And I know I called them one time when I was there in a medical seminar. For some reason or other, we just uh, couldn't get together. But I know she was a good wife for David. No matter how often he failed, boy, she was right there to support him. Morally and maybe even financially. I'm not trying to compare myself with Judy, but, um... If you ever needed $10 until payday, I'd be there with it. Thanks, kiddo. you. Why? What was I doing? Looking very beautiful, that's all. Mm. Did you sleep well? Oh, I must have. I can't remember anything it's since you kissed me goodnight. Mm. Oh, I guess we've got to get up. No, no, no. Just give it another minute. Okay. I never have to be talked into staying in bed. Mm. I wonder if Laura's up. Well, I think I heard her moving around a little earlier. I think she's really going along, don't you? I mean, with all your new rules. With our new rules? Yes. <sighs> she seems to be. I mean, she stayed in all last night, and she didn't even seem resentful about it, and she didn't take that call from Scotty. Well, I think that everything is going to work out just fine. All we all have to do is just relax and take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm really beginning to believe that. Mm -hmm. No, it's a lovely feeling. Oh. Something smells good in here. Laura made breakfast for us this morning. How about that? Well, that sounds encouraging. Where is it? I think she's got it in the oven keeping warm. I'll get it, and you can sit down. Good. How is she this morning? Rick, we just had such a good talk. I think things are really going to be better from now on. She's... She's going to try and meet us halfway. Well, I'm sure that she's going to try, honey. But uh, I want you to be careful. Don't put too much stock in the promises she's making, because she's proven herself to be very changeable lately. I wouldn't want to see you getting hurt again. No, I think she means it this time. A one o'clock. It could last as long as six hours. Mm-hmm. I know. I've heard it's quite an operation. Yeah, it sure is. I'm glad I'm not the one who's performing. Mark must be under a lot of pressure right now. Boy, he sure is. And not just because of the upcoming surgery. He's the one that's had to keep the lid on all the news coming out of there. You know, there have been newspaper reporters roving around the hospital all week. Mm -hmm. Even the floor nurses haven't been told the details or the exact time. Well, I can understand that. I mean, imagine what would happen if the news got out just that Mr. Corbin was being operated on, let alone how serious it is. Mm -hmm. Are you going to observe? Well, I'd like to, if it fits into my schedule. I know that Jeff will. Mm -hmm. I will get that. Can you stay right where you are? Enjoy your coffee? Make yourself at home. <laughs> mm. 
And look who I found on our doorstep. <laughs> hey, David. Good morning, morning. Old buddy. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I can't seem to stay away from here. I guess it's like the old saying, you know, it's no place like home. <laughs> Would you like some breakfast? Oh, Sit no. Down. Uh, no, thank you. No, I've already eaten. Oh, uh, well, maybe you'd like some coffee. Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you very much. Well, I wasn't sure I'd still catch you at home. I was afraid maybe you might have left for the hospital already. Well, we'll be going in about 20 minutes. Yeah, boy, there's sure a lot of activity down there. I was in there yesterday for my therapy session. I couldn't believe all the activity going on. Yeah, business has been booming lately. <laughs> you can say that again. Ah, anything special going on? No, no, uh, tonsillectomies, appendectomies, and occasional open-heart surgery, but um, everyday business as usual at a hospital. <laughs> Sometimes it's just busier than others, that's all. Yeah, makes you appreciate your own good health, doesn't it? Yeah, about 30 days in the Bahamas. Mm. Speaking of which, uh, what do we do for a vacation? In about five years, I think. We better start planning, huh? <laughs> so, how's old uh, Mr. Corbin doing? Well, I really can't tell you, David. He's Mark's patient, not mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of Mark, uh, do you guys mind if I hitch a ride down the hospital with you? I have a little pain in this leg of mine, and I wanted to talk to him about it. I don't know that today would be a good day. I think he's got a busy day. Oh, well, I can always give it a try. If he's too busy to talk to me, I can always sign up for another therapy session. Well, I'm glad you're keeping up with those. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't miss that for anything in the whole world, you know. It's kind of like uh, going to the gym for me, you know. Got my own locker there and the cutest <laughs> little physiotherapist you ever did see in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known there'd be an ulterior motive. Oh, no the ulterior motive about it. I'm just a very upfront kind of guy. <laughs> Morning. Oh, hello. You look like a man in a hurry. Are you kidding? I am. I am. I want to wish you success on your surgery this afternoon. Mm, me too. Thank you, but we just got the final results of the Revson and we're moving it up. As soon as the patient is ready and the staff is ready, we're going in. Well, good luck. Thank you. I wonder what's up. Whatever it is, it must be urgent. You better get checked in. Great. I'll see you later, David. Oh, yeah, don't let me hold up. And thanks for the ride. Huh? Yeah, you're welcome. See you soon. Well, hi there. Hello. This is the nicest thing that happened to me all day. You look as tired as I feel. Oh, baby, I'm worn out. I'd really be happy to get home tonight. Mm, so will I. Can I tell you I'm looking forward to a quiet evening at home with just you and Laura? Hmm. Do you know something? Ever since David left, Laura and I are getting along better. It's beginning to feel like we're a real family. And it's about time. Oh, you know what I mean. Oh, um, listen, I want to stop at the store on the way home and pick up a few things, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. I think I'd like to make a special dinner for the three of us tonight. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Dr. Weber. I have an outside call for you. Thank you. Dr. Weber speaking. Rick, Alan Quatermain. Yes, Alan. I'm glad I caught you before you left the hospital. Look, I know that it's short notice, but I would appreciate it if you could come by my apartment this evening for a meeting. I've uh, got a whole new set of figures that I want you to have a look at for me, and there are a couple of new developments in the cardiac wing that I'd like to discuss. Can you make it? Yes, I guess so. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll be there. Is it just us? No, no, no. Monica will be here, too. Listen, uh, how soon can I expect you? Well, I'm through here. Maybe another half hour? Fine. I'll be looking for you then. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. You'll be where? I'm sorry. That was Alan Quartermain. I have to be at a meeting at his house this evening. Oh, Rick. Honey, I'm sorry, I know. But he said it's important. Will Monica be there? Yes, she will. Look, if that's going to upset you, I can call him back and we no. can make some... No. Of course not. I know how important this is to you. You go right ahead. I will be just fine. Dinner alone, I guess. Um, how late do you expect to be? I don't know for sure. But I'll try and get home as soon as possible. You know that I didn't want to say yes, but I want to be there at all the talks. I understand. I wouldn't mind at all if the uh, meeting were going to be with Alan alone. Oh, so then Monica being there is what upsets you. Can you blame me? I've been hurt a lot because of her, you know? I, uh, I don't trust her. But do you trust me? Of course I do. Completely. So then there's no problem. Besides, I told you that Monica has gone through some very big changes on a personal level. Something about leopards and spots comes to mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
forgive me if I'm uh, a little skeptical. I can forgive you for anything, except having doubts about me where Monica's concerned. I don't. And you should know better than that. Okay, then. There's nothing to worry about, right? 